What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast for Scare Actors slash Haunters Appreciation Month because without all these amazing people, there would have been no Halloween. I'm joined today with Rob from Nights of Horror as well, as well as on the fence movie reviews. So go check that out as well. And the Howling Hour. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, with us is our guest today uh, from the, the one of the creative masterminds behind the Drek Society, Sean. How you doing, Sean? Hey, I'm good, thanks. Thank and you very much for having me again. A great season, man. Um, uh, the hype was was there, man, this season, and I had <laughs> I had an amazing time. Uh, you know, I was there all That's night, uh, media mm-hmm. night, hanging with you and and just getting to know everybody and and getting a little deeper behind the scenes. Uh, and it was really fun, really really cool to to see everyone yeah. and and the the whole thing finish, man. Uh, tell me, man, leading up to this, mm-hmm. what was the stress like, man? Uh, if if I were to rate the stress on a level of one to ten, we were at about a seventy-three. Because <laughs> <laughs> as soon as those winds hit, there wasn't a thing in the world we could do to prevent the damage that happened. And uh, um, if you remember, I pointed it out to you. Mummy and Wolfman took the brunt of the damage to the point where Wolfman was just completely destroyed. All of the walls in Wolfman were completely destroyed. Um, by some miracle, uh, the trees in Wolfman that are made of foam and cardboard did not break in half. They didn't. They actually suffered very minor damage. Uh, Mummy completely caved in on itself, and the right-hand side of the facade ended up being destroyed. But we were able to do all sorts of repairs to it. I, I, ha- I honestly don't know how we were able to repair it and put up the lighting and put up the set dressings and do everything that we wanted to. In fact, this is one of the few haunts where we were able to get almost everything from the concept art into the maze. I'll tell you how you got it done. It was a lot of caffeine and energy drinks. <laughs> yeah, that's very, very true. <laughs> that's very true. Uh, yeah. Now, the uh, the other thing that really helped was um, we had uh, we had a few haunters come out to help us out, and it was it was amazing. So Bellows out, uh, Bellows Haunt, uh, Sewing's Lot, and uh, Helser Six Six Six. They all came to help us out, put up the facade, and get everything done. So without them, we would not have been able to open on time. Yeah. It's awesome. I know that's good. I mean, I know, I know with those winds too. I was talking with Pirates Cave about that they were hit very minorly, but with you guys, I remember seeing the pictures. Like, I think it was that, like, it was Monday. It was like that Monday before Halloween, yeah. right? It was uh, the Monday before Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was that week of Halloween, and so of course, when Mother Nature chooses to strike, it's the week of Halloween, and you're just like, well, I, I you mm-hmm. know, at least it wasn't like the Thursday, or like that, or like that Thursday or that Wednesday, oh, yeah. man, because then you would have been like getting on the roof with just pulling all nighters, getting everything ready and uh but I'm glad that you guys were able to repair and and um get back to uh operation before oh, Halloween yeah. you. and, and mm-hmm. your media night. Um also I I know you were telling me about this too. There was a, an effect that w- sadly didn't work for you guys in the Phantom of the Opera mm-hmm. scene, of course with the the chandelier that you wanted to work, but I still think regardless, I mean it was just a, a phenomenal scene. I mean when you were talking with the behind the scenes and everything, um of the entire maze it was just fun to see all that stuff and really go through and and, and check out all the the making of the maze you know so i really enjoyed that as well i'm glad you enjoyed that definitely uh yeah, rob so you were with me uh that night too what were your thoughts of, of the overall final product man uh you know what i uh this was like my first season doing these home haunt things and y- your guys's haunts stood out um it was it was just so beautiful and i told anthony this you know afterwards that i just thought you know, like your archways um, in, in, you know, when you first walked in, I was like, this is just beautiful. And, and I, I went back to look at uh, some footage and then I went to see some footage from Horror Nights because it reminded me, although I did not like the maze as far as scare wise, but um, uh, uh, the, uh, what is it? Crimson Peak maze. Mm. It, it reminded me of that, just how beautiful it looked. And I know, you know, maybe you might think like, Oh, well, you know, that's, HHN or whatever but I feel like you captured the beauty of, of that that's where the first thing when I walked in I was like wow this maze is beautiful like I really all I could think of when I first walked in just your lighting everything looked good just the way it transitioned from from scene to scene um I, I had a blast going through it and and you know just in uh um you know just and then with all the the just the behind the scenes stuff I got to see too and I was just like man like I'm excited for next year uh, to see what else, what else you guys do. You honestly uh, got me pumped for like, what's to the, like, what's to come in the future for you guys. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. That, mean, that means a hell of a lot to us. I mean, we started out as a tiny home haunt where you walked up, trash bag walls, you got your candy, we jumped out at you, and then you walked <laughs> back. And here it is now. We have to start planning in uh, December to get things done. And I'm just, I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for, for, for all of that, for all of your kind words. It's, it's an amazing trip. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you. No, thank, I mean, from, from all of us, thank you guys. Cause especially with like the wins and everything you, and I was going to say, you guys got this done. Uh, obviously the haunt community came together, but it's because you're honestly so awesome at what you do and, and you put so much heart into what you do and it comes through and, and it to thank you so much. It, we appreciate it so much. Yeah. I My mean, <laughs> I mean, I heard, we heard lots of, uh, kind words and stuff. Obviously we, uh, we saw Rick West that night at, at media night mm -hmm. and he really enjoyed it as well. Um, oh, yeah. Our friends over at TLEV, I invited him out uh, to on my reservation because I, I told him I was like, "Hey man, you know, you want to get your Universal Monsters fixed this year? This is where you come right here. You're gonna, you, you know, you're gonna get your Universal Monsters hey, fixed." There and, you go. <laughs> and then they, they did solid work. And then they're like, "Oh, who are they again?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, you remember at Midsummer Scream with the big movie theater facade?" They're like, "Oh yeah, those guys. Okay." So uh, it seems like that facade has become iconic within the last uh, two years, huh? Mm-hmm. It really has. Everybody, can, there, there were a few people who would look up at it and go, "What happened? Was this the wind?" No, no, no. It intentionally looks like that. It's supposed to be a <laughs> bombed out movie theater, guys. <laughs> Trust me. If the facade was up during the winds, we wouldn't have a facade. Yeah. <laughs> I know, man. I mean, I, I, and that's another thing I want to talk about too. One of the things I really mm -hmm. uh, appreciated and liked a lot of it was the attention to detail walking into your your maze, the the very big facade, and then transporting you into the world of the universal monsters it was kind of mm -hmm. like almost two experiences in once right there where you had the the whole 40s like the war setting and then you walk into the movie theater and and when you go inside the maze your experience from that world war ii goes away and you go inside these movies which i which i really enjoyed man mm -hmm. tell me something uh when, when planning that how, how hard mm -hmm. was that to kind of um to get immerse people into those mm -hmm. universes i mean obviously you want to get them into one to the next so what was the biggest mm -hmm. struggle doing that the biggest struggle was actually the um, the little details, because one thing that we always ask ourselves is, OK, we know what the room is going to be. We know what the bare bones outline is going to be. OK, how can we take it to the next level? Because obviously, so for Phantom of the Opera, OK, they're going through the sewers. Are we just going to have the archways? No. What can we do to enhance that? And I mean, with COVID, we had to limit it. Li COVID limited what we could and couldn't do. And so my buddy, John, who actually played uh, Frankenstein's monster, he was the guy on the stilts. Right. He's our main uh, construction and lighting guy. And he said, why don't we just do lighting instead to enhance it? And that's when he went out and bought globes that made it look like water was on the ground. And that's how we were able to enhance Phantom of the Opera. Uh, the same thing can be said with Dracula. Okay, so we have coffins. Coffins are is Dracula's thing. What else can we throw in there to make it interesting? Oh, well, let's reuse the walls from The Shining last year, paint those brown, make it look like cave walls, and make it look like an area under the castle. Right. You know, things like that. And then from there, we just let our imagination soar, and eventually we start creating Easter eggs and little details and things like that. And it's kind of going back to the imaginary mindset of if you can look where the guest looks, put something there so that way they're fully immersed in it. Right. And even though every guest might not see what another sees or pay attention as, as much, if only one guest gets it, then we've done our job. No, oh, right. I, I agree. I mean, and I and I so you talked you touched a little bit about Easter eggs, man, and Easter eggs were a mm -hmm. huge part oh, uh, yes. <laughs> of the of the uh Thing. I got to ask you, I know you put up mm -hmm. on your, your Instagram, if anyone found mm -hmm. the Easter eggs and told you exactly where everyone, mm -hmm. everyone was at, you were going to give them a special prize. Did yep. anyone ever find those Easter eggs and tell you exactly nope. where they were at? Nobody got them. Dang. <laughs> yeah, they're only, the, the one that everybody got was the mask in Phantom of the Opera. Right. Because it's right there when you walked in. Uh, I think one person got the one in Dracula. Okay. Which the one in Dracula was from Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. We actually built out a sign that said super fun happy slide right. with a working lever. So um yeah, I think one person got that. Nobody got the one in Frankenstein. And the one in Frankenstein was a little brain in the jar labeled Abby Normal from uh uh Young Frankenstein, Mel Brooks's film Young Frankenstein. Right. Uh Wolfman actually got a lot of people because it was right there in the open. It was the name of the pub, which was the Slaughtered Lamb from American Werewolf in London. Yes. And nobody got the one in Mummy. Uh, 
You know yeah, what's funny it, too is on top of those Easter eggs, you even threw in more Easter eggs as mm-hmm. far as like yeah, especially in the uh, Frankenstein, Doctor Frankenstein's room, all the like the, mm-hmm. the the chemicals and stuff were different chemicals from iconic horror films or sci-fi films and stuff, which I thought was, or even video games as well, mm-hmm. which I thought was really really Thanks. cool. I mean, when you were mm-hmm. uh, explaining to me to them and you started you know saying all of them, I'm like, oh, I know where all these are from. Like I've I've either mm-hmm. played that game or I've seen that movie, you know. So mm-hmm. I really like that, especially as well as uh, in the in the Mummies too when you're walking through and all the, the hieroglyphic, uh, uh, hieroglyphics on the wall, I, I really saw, saw a lot of those cool Easter eggs, too. And I especially mm-hmm. love the, uh, the Ash vs. Evil Dead one. I mean, that kind of just... Oh, yeah. That, that's obvious. <laughs> that's like something that's in the movie where they have like the writings on the book or in the wall and stuff. So I mm-hmm. thought that was really cool as well. Um, yeah, you can thank my buddy Key for that one. Uh, Key is the guy who played uh, Wolfman. Right. Yeah, okay. he was the guy. Yeah, he was helping me... Um, after the wins, he was out there helping me. We were frantically painting on more hieroglyphics. And he was like, do you really care what I do? And I was like, go for it. Knock, <laughs> knock yourself out. Have a, have when, a blast, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, I really enjoyed that. And also your your Wolfman. I mean, big props oh, to him, man. He was drenched mm-hmm. every night, but he put 110% oh, yeah. in that character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. And uh, he was finishing that costume up until the week we uh, opened. Right. And as soon as he put it on, he I just hear him muffled and start, oh, crap. And I was like, what's wrong? <laughs> I can't see anything. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. And then he takes it off. Oh, oh, yeah, I can't see or hear anything. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> So what we eventually had to do was uh, we had to use the house lights to give him a heads up when it was time to take a break. So he took advantage of uh, whenever we needed to sanitize the maze. He, so as soon as John put the house lights up, he'd take it off, start breathing heavily, wipe himself down, get some water. And then as soon as those uh, house lights turned off, he'd put the mask back on and he wouldn't stop out of character until those lights came back on because he didn't know when there was a break in groups that's remember, awesome yeah i remember seeing that too i mean i just felt like i felt bad for him but he did an amazing oh, yeah. job so i was mm-hmm. like dude just keep doing you <laughs> and it's funny uh, a couple people thought he was an animatronic at first because he just kept moving <laughs> <laughs> sure went along with it yeah we bought that this year it's a big you know yeah, exactly. <laughs> well <of> animatronic <laughs> that was great what you got rob Oh no, I was going to, I was going to ask. Um, Uh so, uh, like when you guys are, when you guys are building out this maze, when you, when you talk about like Easter eggs and little details, is that something that you kind of already like kind of pre-thought like, okay, well we'll put this here. We'll put that there. Or is it something Mm -hmm. as you start building the bigger stuff and kind of make your way down, you, you start saying like, okay, well, you know, maybe we'll add this or add this or, or, you know, is it kind of like on the wing, you know, on the fly or is that something planned out? it's it's honestly a little bit of both i mean the the easter eggs for the contest those were planned out well in advance but then a lot of the smaller things like uh in frankenstein um i was looking through the various props we had and i was like okay i've got all of these uh voss water bottles and i wanted to use these for yeah that's (laughs) that's exactly where i got them um i was like i have all of these laying around and i wanted to fill them with what looked like blood or serum or something for frankenstein and then it clicked to me i'm like what if i just started naming them after various chemicals from pop culture and i was like okay i'll just go ahead and do that and then in the mummy when we started doing the uh, hieroglyphics we're like oh we can just toss a bunch of stuff in here that'll make people go wait what (laughs) yeah so a, a lot of that stuff is on the okay. fly and i can uh, i can tell you right now we are planning out our easter eggs for next year nice. okay okay <laughs> nice. i'm excited um another thing i liked about uh your guys's haunt this year was uh, obviously the, the the museum for the anniversary obviously mm. and and it was so cool to go back there and I, I remember i had a lot of friends come out and i would you know while you were out front working i would take my friends back there and be like look this is all the stuff they've done in the past and they i didn't realize they'd done so much and um, I, I think I really enjoyed seeing all the, the stuff like that. When, when it came down to picking stuff for the, uh, the museum, was there any like, oh man, maybe I want to put this here instead of that. Or was it just like, hey, let's just throw some stuff out and see if people remember it. It was actually more of the, uh, the latter. We just were just, eh, we don't know if people are going to enjoy this. Let's just put it out there. Um, it ended up being a huge success. People nice. were getting a huge kick out of seeing all of our props from years past and everything else. And we're actually considering bringing that back for future years and putting new, new stuff out, changing stuff around, maybe putting in a photo op or two from old set pieces, things like that. Nice. But there is one, there is one item that I, to this day, we're all still kicking ourselves. But in 2017, when we did Dark Christmas, uh, my buddy Ryan, who played the mummy on our second night, on Halloween night, 
um, he ended up being a giant evil reindeer. He was a stilt walking reindeer and he had this <laughs> giant headpiece that kind of looked like Hela from Thor Ragnarok, but it was, it was giant. It was this huge headpiece with a long frosted tongue on it. And it looked creepy. And he was like, Oh, I should have just put that in there. And all of us, Oh, come on. <laughs> hey man, it's good to have for the next couple of years if you're planning on bringing oh, the museum back. So you got yeah, more exactly. stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I I thought that was cool, and I remember taking people back there, and and they were just digging it and enjoying Thanks. it. And Thanks. I mean, uh, like I said, there was so many stuff that I didn't realize you guys have done, and and I wish I could get in a time machine and go back and see it, man. It was it was really cool. I gotcha. Um, Thanks. but I you know I think overall, I mean, the media night that I went, you guys were so welcoming with open arms with us, and. <laughs> You know, you, you gave us the freedom to kind of uh, to film some reactions, which I still have those, and I'm still going to be <laughs> working on those, of course. Um, thanks, thanks. But uh, you gave us the freedom to do that. You gave us the freedom to kind of just chill with you in the front and, and really just hang out and, and hear guest reactions. I think that was one of the highlights of the night is just hanging with you and, and just hearing all the guest reactions as they were coming in and out, um, mm -hmm. which was really cool. Uh, seeing a lot of uh, people in the, in the community come through and just – overall see what their thoughts were i had a good time and of course <laughs> you know me loving it so much i i ended up uh, buying pizza for the whole crew after that because i was like these guys much doing, appreciated these guys are doing a great job man they need they need some Thanks. food in them after this man Thanks. so um but you know everyone was super nice i mean the, the whole cast and, and crew were just amazing and very well uh with open open arms just just letting me come around and, and get into some spots to film and, you know, I was trying my best to stay out of everyone's way, get the scares and stuff, and being very sneaky of what I did, and, and I think I accomplished a good job. I, I hope I did. <laughs> but, oh, no, uh, <laughs> but they But I, I want to thank you for that, because uh, I, I had oh, yeah, never no had problem. the opportunity to, to really do anything like that, so when uh, I suggested the idea to you and, and you were really on board with it, like I, I was like, okay, I know for next year now, like if, if we, if you want to do this again, like I already know I can bring some multiple cameras up in here and, there you go. and set them up in certain <laughs> spots and then change them around. Like it, it would be a fun time. I think uh, nice. we, we could plan it more for next year too. Cause I think oh, uh, yeah. now that I know kind of like the essential area of your, your backyard, I'm like, okay, I think, I think we can work this better <laughs> next year. I got oh, heck this. Yeah. <laughs> we're going good. Oh, um, heck yeah, no, though. I'm, no, I, I'm I, looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I even got a GoPro, too, so it's like we could stick that somewhere, you know? Hey, there we go. Nice. Um, but, no, I had I had a fun time, man, and I, I don't Good. think I, I, I could stress that enough. I mean, it, it was just – it's been an insanely rough and interesting year for everyone. And to have actual maze walkthroughs, I don't think anyone in their right mind thought they were going to be able to walk through any sort of maze this year. I mean, at least mm -hmm. I didn't. And then when you and Corona were like, oh, we're going to do mazes this year, I'm like, oh, my God, someone's doing a maze this year. I'm so happy. <laughs> it's not a drive through event. <laughs> I loved it so much, man. So obviously, uh, you were you getting a ton of great feedback afterwards from both the media night and Halloween night, man? I mean, it was a great thing, and I hope a lot of people gave you great feedback. Oh yeah, for it. no, every everybody was wonderful who came through. Uh, everybody was able to follow all of our safety procedures to the letter. Everybody was super patient with us when we uh, had to shut down to do sanitization, and just in general, everybody was thankful. And I got so many people on Halloween night thanking us for saving Halloween and giving them something to do on Halloween. And the best part about it is we never had that massive crowd that just jam packed the entire area. Like we were fearing, everybody was really cool about social distancing. Um, everybody wore a mask, nobody complained about it. And just in general, everybody had a great night and everybody was super thankful. I even had a couple of people come up to me in tears, thanking me wow. for doing something on Halloween. And for us, that's, that's the reason we do it every year. We absolutely love doing this. There's no sign of slowing down for us. <laughs> right, I feel that man. Um... I know, uh, Rob, what was your experience, man? I mean, walking through it and all, like, so, I want to hear what you had to think. So so let me just say this. Um, I, I don't know if he knew I was with you beforehand because I had started messaging you on Instagram just on my own, just trying to get a date to go in. And you were super mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, this time or, the, you know, you could come this this day. And then I eventually, I think I told you I was, I was going to meet up with Anthony there. But yeah. even before that, you were super like, hey, you know, you were very like, you would work with me, you're telling me, let me know. So I, I really do appreciate that. Um, and then also, yeah, the way you had everything organized, it, it was really organized. And that that's one thing, not that I wasn't expecting that, but I was really surprised in how like, you had staggered everyone. So no one was kind of, you know, there was no crowds running into each other. So 
that was cool. Even when I was uh, waiting at my car for like my time, uh, you know, I was texting Anthony, but even I could hear people, oh, yo, you know, we're waiting for our time this time's here. And then, you know, you just kind of see the crowds going, you know, at their time slots. So I was like, okay, these guys, these guys, uh, you, you know, they know what they're doing. They got, they got their stuff together. So that was all very encouraging for me. And then just to walk up there and see everything. It, it Honestly, like, you know, like Anthony said, we didn't think we were going to get any kind of haunt, you know, walk through this year. We, I was happy with, you know, okay, we're getting drive throughs but to, to get, to be able to walk through a maze and just get, all these fills and and I was I was excited like I I I got off of work I was like I'm gonna go home take a shower it was like I was I was going out for like a like a party or something I was like I'm going home I'm gonna take a shower gotta make sure all my stuff's together and you know we're gonna head out there it was just yeah, I felt like I was like 22 again um but I had a blast going through your maze and then you know the museum after you know I had never got to go through any of your previous mazes but to see all the props I was just like smiling from ear to ear because I was just like, this is all like, to me, it's, I know like going through these mazes is supposed to be kind of scary, but to me, a lot of this stuff is just awesome and cool and neat and, and beautiful. And it's just the whole maze, the whole, your whole museum you have there. I hope you do bring the museum back. Uh, like what you're saying, maybe photo ops and stuff like that. Cause that was awesome. I mean, as much fun as I had in the maze, uh, I mean, Anthony will tell you, I was just like smiling, walking around, looking at everything. I was like, all this stuff's so cool. But like, like I said, man, it truly, truly appreciation for all the stuff you did. And, and I will say, uh, I don't know if you can tell, I love wolves. I love werewolves. So, so that, that werewolf, that werewolf uh, uh, scene, I was just like, what, this is awesome. It was just so cool. I was, I was grinning. I had, I had a blast in that, in that, especially specifically in that area. I was just like, and he had like all this room to kind of like move around. I was just like, that's so cool. Uh, safe I'm to gonna, say you may I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna start your, crying uh, right now. You, 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 safe to say you may have a uh, werewolf character in the future for you. If you, if you need one. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Nice. Rob, Rob loves that stuff, man. But oh, no, yeah, I, yeah. It, it was, it was a fun time, dude. I really, I really had a good time and not to mention, that's good. That's good. And, and I mentioned this with pirates cave, but even with you, you, you did an amazing job with, uh, following the COVID guidelines and everything. I mean, you, you made everybody have a safe walkthrough. And like you said, um, everybody was really chill about social distancing. And I think the, the whole reservation system is, is a nice, easy, organized way to, to let people in at a time. Um, mm -hmm. But even going through the maze, like a lot of people are like, well, how are you going to do accomplished maze with scares and stuff? But it's like, well, with you, it's like you had everybody behind plexiglass. And that, mm -hmm. that helped a lot. Um, with uh, obviously the, the scares and it actually worked in a lot of the actors favors too. Cause they can bang on the plexiglass. Oh, and a lot of yeah. people got scared yeah. with that. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. uh, another thing that was cool is, uh, we actually got to film, um, and it's on our channel right now, if you guys want to check it out, but we got to film the rematch for the try not to get scared challenge mm -hmm. there, which, um, I don't mean to brag, but instill, you know, try not to get scared. Champion. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the second year in a row. So, you know, I don't mean to brag about that, but you know, yeah, you, you gave him, you gave him two shots at it and, and... gave him two shots. And it, you know, what was the, the final scare that got me was it was actually Sean at the mm. very end when we walked out, he like banged on the thing and got both of us. And I was like, I thought the maze was over and he did that. I was like, I was like, at least it was two to one. Cause <laughs> <laughs> but uh no i mean I, I think between you guys and corona haunt you guys really stepped up and, and let us uh film our try not to get scare challenge and we had so much fun uh doing it like i've you can ask uh rob i mean uh this year was a like i said a very tough year but the way we filmed the try not to get scare challenge is some the way i've always wanted to film it and uh when you go to haunts like horror nights or knots they necessarily don't let you do that because of the light and everything mm -hmm. um with with you know, with you guys being as cool as you guys are, uh, you, you know, all it was was a simple like, hey, so like I have this plan and, you know, we'll, we're able to work around what with whatever your rules are. Uh, but obviously you guys were you guys were both really chill and let us do it. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of how I filmed that and edited it uh, and you see the final product, it actually is inspiration from Ellen DeGeneres when she sends her. Uh when she sends Andy through mazes and stuff. And I always liked the, the reaction and then you show the scare and then you show our reaction to the scare, which I thought was mm -hmm. really cool. So nice. it's, it, it was a really cool thing. And, and I think, uh, I just, I, I think that's where if, uh, next year, I, which I'm hoping to God, it's not anything like this year, but if next year is, uh, 
I think next year we're just going to keep doing the Try Not to Get Scared Challenge at Home Haunts because it's just a lot <laughs> easier to get what we need. And these haunts are just uh, up there with the HHN ones, in my opinion. So, yep. Yep. if not better. So, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Sean, I have to ask, man, since yeah. 2020 was clearly a successful year for you guys, uh, mm -hmm. what can you tell the fans, a little sneak preview of what's to come in 2021? What's going to come in 2021? Well, I can already tell you uh, something that's already been announced. It's, it is going to be Fear Fest Grindhouse. Yes. It is going to be Fear Fest Grindhouse. Uh, the four movies that we are going to be featuring are all original. Nice. These are, uh, we wanted more creative control, so we're like, okay, why not? So the first movie that you're going to go into is a Hammer-style horror film named Feaster Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Which I am ridiculously excited about. Uh, you might you might see the stone archways reappear in that room since the room is supposed to be a park. Nice. Uh, the second movie that you're going to go into is supposed to be a takeoff on the 70s psychological horror films at the time, very much nice. like Wicker Man, and that is called The Meat House of Dr. Moreau. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you gotta love these like grindhouse B movie films. Like they always have the most outrageous things, and 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 Sean's keeping true to that. I'm trying to. <laughs> Uh, the third movie that you walk through is a tribute to the ridiculous horror movies turned musicals that they attempted in the late 70s, early 80s. Okay. okay. And this one is called Phantom of the Ice Rink. <laughs> I love it. Just a heads up, you might be chased by the Phantom riding a miniature Zamboni. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Sign me up. Sign me up. Sign me up. Yep. Nice. And our final room is a tribute to the 80s grindhouse films of John Carpenter. Nice. Ooh. Entitled Dino Warriors of the Year 3000. That sounds that sounds <laughs> that sounds beautiful. Dino oh, yeah. Warriors of the Year 3000. <laughs> of the Year 3000. And our wraparound theme, uh, just like last year, we are going to have another wraparound theme nice. uh, since Fear Fest 89. That was obviously 80s. Last year it was World War II. This time around it's going to be the 1970s. Oh, sweet. Uh, okay. Yep. 1970s Las Vegas. So yes, we already have. I can't believe I'm saying this. Yes, we have a decommissioned uh, slot machine that is going to be that part of it. Is dope. <laughs> That's going to be part of the scenery when you walk in. I'm so excited Can for that. Can we expect some of the greatest 70s hits playing outside of the facade? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> And no. uh, actually, our facade is not going to be beginning where our theater facade began last year. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Um, I already have the go ahead to put our, uh, so our facade for next year is going to be a drive-in movie theater. <sighs> the entire driveway is going to be our drive-in movie theater. Wow. That's so, you can, so cool. Awesome. You can see, you're going to be able to see the screen from the street. We're going to have our little projection booth on our front yard, uh, on the front lawn is going to be the sign for our drive-in movie theater. And you go in through the side and you are already instantly in the employees only area 1970s Vegas getting ready to go in. <laughs> nice. So That's can we cool. expect fake movie trailers from all these things outside? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I I want to hear that, and I also want to hear the let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's something from the oh, bar yeah. and that, and then I always love the from Tarantino, the uh when he did uh Kill Bill. Now your feature presentation, mm, the little yes. cheesy one. I mean, just like <laughs> oh, that's gonna be in there. <laughs> yeah, I love all that, man. I'm super stoked. Then, Thanks, uh, you got me sold, Rob. I think nice. we'll, we already this, got this we already smiles. Got, yeah, this smiles <laughs> real right here. We already got Excellent. one plan for next year, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm super stoked for that. Uh, um, I can give you a uh, um because I just recently spoke with Key, the guy who uh, who is Wolfman, because he, he builds right. his own costumes every year. I can give you a little teaser as to what he's gonna be doing. Oh, okay. An so exclusive can, sneak peek. Uh, mm, I can't give too much information. Okay. However, what I will say is he is going to be in Dino Warriors. Nice. And it is going to be the biggest puppet we have ever built for Amazing. Wow. <laughs> is he already That's starting all to write out the, the, uh, the concept art and everything and already getting to yeah. start on that? He's actually b beginning construction next week. Nice. <laughs> that's, I guess the kinks as early awesome. on as possible oh, so you guys can yeah. work with that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm super stoked for that. That's going to be dope. Mm-hmm. I remember too. You were I'm always saying, saying uh, "You always want to try to go bigger too." So mm -hmm. it's always it's what, always the goal. <laughs> and what better way to do that than with this? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked, man. I mean, so if you guys didn't get to see Drex Society this year, definitely go next year because you don't want to miss that Grindhouse Film Festival, man. I I'm a huge fan of those uh, Grindhouse movies. You know, Planet Terror. Nice. Um, oh yeah, same Death here. Death <laughs> Proof. Some of my favorites right there. 
you know, those old school B movies. Uh, just he's gonna bring. He's pretty much bringing you a upgraded version of slaughter cinema. Even better mm-hmm. though. <laughs> um, but no, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm super stoked for this, man. You're gonna have the the whole like drive-in style in the in the in the in the drive mm-hmm. and you know your driveway. And oh yeah, go, you're immediately gonna go. So does that mean the maze will actually start through the walkway leading up to where your last year's facade or this past year's facade was? Actually, yes, it is because that's gonna be our lobby. And then once you get to the front, uh, we're still gonna have that branch off because we need the emergency exit to go around right. and the haunt museum. But all of that leading up to the facade where you saw the brick last year. All of that is going to be incorporated into the maze this time around. I'm just saying, I wouldn't mind scaring for one night and be a dream come true. <laughs> we already have plans ready to go. Here we go. I'm we st- already have plans ready to go. I'm stoked. <laughs> I'm stoked. You just you you know where to find me, dude. You know where oh, yeah. to find me. I'm there. I'll, exactly. I'll, throw on the, I'll throw on the clacker gloves. We're good to go. Hey, there you go. Nice, <laughs> excellent, excellent. That'll but, work. Uh, Sean, I, I want to thank you again, man, because you you really yeah, no problem. You, you and your team stepped up this year, really <laughs> yes, gave yes. us and delivered something beautiful and mm-hmm. saved Halloween, man, and we can't thank you enough for that. That's why we invited you thank back you. to the uh, Haunters Appreciation Month, and I, I I am so stoked for next year. I know I could I could speak for Rob too. He's stoked for next year too. He's <laughs> yeah, ready to go. Yeah, awesome. Sounds what, great. What month are we in? Damn, November. I know, yeah, I'm, I know right? I'm, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go wait in line right now. Go hey, there you go. Just, yeah. just don't mind us. If you see us every morning, just a little wave and yeah, you know, right. Like, oh, uh, we got a countdown in our, in our tent where we're patiently waiting for the day. Oh, yeah. um, no, I'm super stoked for next year, man. I was I was Sweet. very nice. very impressed with this year, and I love thank you. every minute of this. Yeah, and, thank you very yes, much. Definitely. Um, I, I I honestly can't wait to see uh, what you guys have for next year and for the future's planning because I know you got five years planned. So. Hmm. A lot of good stuff coming. Yep, I'm excited. A lot of good stuff <laughs> coming. Yeah. A lot of good stuff. Uh, fingers crossed. Hopefully, uh, Midsummer Scream does make a return next year. If you uh, mm, want to get a yeah. little sneak preview of Drex Society, check them out at Midsummer Scream. They uh, more than likely will be there. I'm pretty sure Rick West is a huge fan of them, so he would love oh, to yeah. have them there. <laughs> um, but yeah, check them out at Midsummer Scream if if it returns next year. I highly suggest it because they do great stuff. And obviously, come time October. Uh, follow them on Instagram and uh, definitely uh, stay tuned to what they're planning and what they're doing so you can uh, get a reservation this year because they were gone pretty quick this year, huh? Mm-hmm. Pretty damn yeah, quick they this lasted, year. They lasted about maybe a week and a half, and then after that I was trying to squeeze as many people in as I could while right. keeping it safe. <laughs> right. So mm-hmm. uh, if we are in the same circumstances, which I'm praying to God we're not, but mm-hmm. if we are, yeah. jump on a reservation if we're not and it's a little bit more safer, prepare to wait in the long ass line. <laughs> uh, Sean, thank you so much again. I can't stress that enough. Absolutely. And, and we can't wait to see what you have in store, man. And like I said, follow them on Instagram. Sean, you want to plug in the Instagram so people can find you guys? Yeah, we are Drex Society. Just type in Drex Society and we'll pop right up. There it is, man. Uh, I'll leave a I'll leave it down in the description below so you can uh, copy and paste that to your phone but definitely uh check that out check them out and go support them they do amazing work and we highly highly suggest you go see them uh if you guys missed this year's walkthrough i have a video on my channel and they have a video on uh you guys have a youtube channel as well right uh yeah i haven't uploaded it onto youtube yet but it's on our instagram it's on the instagram so check out the instagram Instagram. but i could tell you this right now the videos do no justice to actually seeing it in person (laughs) you had to be there man yep yep uh, but Sean, we are, uh, gonna, of course, bring you back on, uh, come time next season when it Sounds gets good. closer to the haunt. So you can give us a little bit more sneak previews as to what's coming to the haunt this year, right. as far as rooms and stuff. And then mm-hmm. obviously we want to do this again next year with the whole haunters and, and character appreciation month. We're trying to keep that going in November. So obviously you got a spot here. All right. Year or two. Sounds so good. <laughs> we can't wait. Uh, right. thank you everyone for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, uh, Rob, where can they find us on social media? Oh, they could find us on uh, the Knights of Horror on Instagram. And Knights of and Horror also, on Twitter. And Knights of Horror on YouTube. <laughs> Knights of Horror on YouTube, Knights of Horror on Twitter, <laughs> all that fun stuff. Check out the merch shop. We got some merch if you guys, especially right now, it's getting cold. Yeah, get a hoodie. We yeah, get yourself a hoodie. They're nice and warm. I got one. I got to keep me warm. Rest one. I wear yeah. that to work every day, especially right now. That's a nice design, too. Nice design, man. Nice design. Uh, we will continue to be uploading podcasts and videos, uh, getting back on a regular schedule pretty soon. 
But until then, my name's Anthony. That's Rob. I'm Rob. That's Mr. Sean from the Direct Society, and we will see you guys soon. Thanks.